the Calvin Benson cycle has four stages. So, in the four stages are, in the first stage is something called uh, carboxylation reaction. In the second stage is a reduction reaction. In the third stage is regeneration reaction. Regeneration of ribulose one five is phosphate, and we can consider the fourth stage as conversion of the products of this reduction reaction into maybe you know starch, cellulose. Uh, or to sucrose or to intermediates of pentose phosphate pathway. So these are the four stages of uh, uh, the Calvin cycle. So it all begins with, diagrammatically we can represent in this manner, it all begins with the ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. To ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, a carbon dioxide is attached. So therefore, this is a 5 carbon molecule, 2, 1 carbon is attached, so it becomes then a 2, 3 carbon compounds. That is nothing but 3 phosphoglycerate is formed. This is characterized by an enzyme known as Rubisco. Once you have 3 phosphoglycerate, this will be converted into triose uh, phosphates and this is what is called the reduction reaction. Now in the reduction reaction ATP will be utilized and they will be converted to ADP. NADPH will be utilized. So remember these are produced in the light reaction NADPH plus H plus that will be oxidized to NADP plus and the triose phosphate is formed. Now this is the reduction step. Then you have in the third step that is the regeneration step. What happens in the regeneration step is this triose phosphate that is formed it is converted back into ribulose of five phosphate. This is the regeneration step. So therefore this is step number one, this is step number two and this is step number three. Regeneration step. So uh, if we have to, in order to understand this whole concept, if we begin with the 5 carbon ribulose 5 phosphate, let us see how we get uh, uh, ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. If we have to begin with the uh, 3 ribulose 5 phosphate molecules, that is 3 into 5 is equal to 15 carbon atoms. And each of these ribulose 515 bisphosphate is able to fix one carbon dioxide, which means we would require three carbon dioxide molecules. So therefore, this becomes 15 plus 3, 18 carbon atoms. So in other words, this will be six molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate. Six into threes are 18 carbon atoms. That will form another six molecules of triose phosphates. What happens now is in the fourth stage is this triose phosphate. Remember, this is happening in the stroma. This triose phosphate, five of them, five of them will be converted back into three ribulose one five is phosphate. So five into three fifteen carbon atoms we get our 3 ribulose 1, 5 bisphosphate. We get back our 15 carbon atoms. What happens to the remaining 3 carbon atoms? One of those, that 3 carbon atom, that is one of the triose phosphate is transferred. Triose phosphate is transferred into the cell cytoplasm where it will be converted to either to starch or to cellulose or to sucrose or either intermediates of pentose phosphate pathway. So this is uh, this is the, the overall outline of the, the fixation of carbon dioxide in the Cadmi cycle. Now we are going to focus especially on this particular enzyme. 
we will deal with elaborately with each of these steps. We will start with the fixation of carbon. Let us deal with this Rubisco enzyme. Rubisco enzyme is a very interesting enzyme. Why it is interesting? Because we should know that Rubisco is the most abundant protein in the plant kingdom. About 50% of the protein that is present in plant is nothing but Rubisco. And Rubisco, this is how we will be writing Rubisco. This is an enzyme with the two activities. So very opposing two behaviors. Which are the opposing two behaviors? So it stands for ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase is one of the activity and oxygenase is another activity. We will be dealing elaborately with these two activities in, 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 the, in the future sessions. Right now what is important for us is to look at the structure of this enzyme. Now this enzyme has got eight large subunits large subunit with a molecular weight ranging from 51 to 58 kilo Dalton. If the catalytic subunits are here, so this has got the catalytic subunits. Then it also has got eight small subunits. If the molecular weight ranges from about uh, 12 to 18 kilo Dalton. So these are the small subunits. And in the collection of this large and the small subunit makes a functional Rubisco enzyme. Now, uh, in the large subunits are encoded from the chloroplast and the small subunits are encoded from the nucleus. And then it is assembled in order to make it a functional Rubisco enzyme. I mentioned that the catalytic subunit is in the larger subunit. At least two of these subunits, two of these, at least it has to be L2 in order to be functional. So therefore, if the entire enzyme is L8 and S8, this is the entire enzyme. So therefore, the small subunit is contributing towards uh, the stability of the enzyme and giving a particular structure, possibly that is a function of the small subunit. So this is the, the overall outline of Rubisco enzyme. I recommend that you look into a book on photosynthesis in order to see if the arrangement of how these subunits are done. It, books will explain about the alpha, beta, and arrangement of this enzyme, which is worth looking at. Now this enzyme, though it is abundant, this is a very slow acting enzyme. If the rate of conversion of this enzyme is only about three molecules of CO2 can be fixed per second by this enzyme. Even though it is a, it's a slow acting enzyme, the catalytic K cat is very small for this enzyme, but remember, this enzyme is able to fix 10 raised to the power 11 tons of CO2. It's able to fix 10 raised to the power 11 tons of CO2 per annum. That is such a huge number. Though it is a slow acting enzyme, it is an enzyme required for supporting life of every living being on this earth. Let us try to understand how the carboxylation reaction is carried out. So this is the structure of uh, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. We will number the carbon atoms. So therefore, this is carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. There are two phosphate groups. So therefore, this is ribulose, a ketose, 1,5-bisphosphate. Now, the ribulose to 1,5 bisphosphate, we are going to attach a carbon dioxide and we will make it into two, three carbon compounds. Now, this attachment is carried out by an enzyme called Rubisco. Now, the Rubisco enzyme, in initially it is an inactive enzyme. If the first step is to activate the enzyme, 
let us denote Rubisco enzyme by the letter E. Now, in Rubisco enzyme, each of those subunits, for example, subunit number 201 is a lysine residue. So, we know that the lysine residue, it will have an NH amino group. Uh, and to this amino group, if the carbon dioxide is first added, so therefore when a CO2 is added to this one, so a CO2 is added, now here is the enzyme with the lysine NH, if the CO2 is added, so CO2 is added, now even now the enzyme is not active. In order to make this enzyme active, an Mg2 plus must be added to this one. That will make it if the enzyme, if the lysine residues, if the NH. So if the Mg2 plus is coordinated with this, and this way if the Rubisco enzyme becomes active. All this activation step is carried out by an enzyme known as Rubisco, Rubisco activase. So this is the function of this enzyme. Rubisco activase will activate this enzyme. Now this activation is dependent on uh, the pH of the system, uh, dependent on uh, the uh, light. It, has, it is activated only when there is sunlight. So that is how this enzyme is activated. When we deal with the regulation of photosynthesis, we will be looking once again back into this particular topic. So right now we should know that we require Rubisco activates in order to activate this enzyme. So let me rub this so that we don't need in order to understand this portion. So if the ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate before the fixation of carbon, it undergoes a transformation, it forms a kind of an enodiol formation, then a carbon dioxide is added. Look at where the carbon dioxide is added. So let us number this molecule, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. A carbon is added at the second position and this is giving, this product will be uh, 2 carboxy, 3 keto, adapinitol diphosphate. 2 carboxy, 3 keto, adapinitol 1,5-bisphosphate. That is this product. Now this product now it will split, will split into the two products, one, the, uh, the two products that is nothing but 3-phosphoglycerate is formed. So look at the structure of 3-phosphoglycerate. In the carbon numbers, we can number the carbon atom. This is carbon number 1, carbon number 2, carbon number 3. And this is carbon number 1, carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. Two identical 3-phosphoglycerate is formed. If we were to use a radio labeled carbon dioxide, we can make out where this radio labeled carbon dioxide will get fixed. Only one of these end products will have a radio labeled carbon dioxide. So this is how fixation of uh, carbon dioxide to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate occurs. Remember, this is an irreversible reaction. And this irreversible reaction has a negative delta G of minus 35.1 uh, kilojoules per mole. 